In the dark and oppressive depths of the South China Sea, Beijing's new and arrogant empire is emerging from the shadows. The Dragon is preparing to dominate the oceans not only above the water, with a massive fleet of aircraft carriers and destroyers, but also below the water, with a silent army of over 60 modern submarines. However, Beijing's arrogant plans are not alone in the Pacific. Thousands of miles away, in the icy waters of the North Pole, Beijing's new, limitless ally, Moscow, is playing the same dangerous game with its own nuclear specters. Washington's silent hunters, its covert submarine assets, are preparing to descend onto the field, not only to hunt the dragon, but also the bear, to drown both in their own lairs. This is the story of the 21st century's greatest and most dangerous global chess game, played in the depths of the Pacific and the Arctic between invisible hunters and arrogant empires. And in this game, the one who makes the first move does not always win. The one who is the quietest, the most patient, and who hears their enemies every breath wins. So who will emerge victorious in this striking submarine war? The alliance of Russia and China, or the incredible naval network the US has established in the Pacific? To find out, we must track sonar signals and map that dark battlefield stretching from the Pacific to the Arctic. The first place we must look is at the dragon and the bear, the shadow armies of the two empires. To understand the threat posed by China's underwater power, we must first acknowledge its overwhelming numerical superiority. The People's Liberation Army Navy, PLAN, has undertaken one of the fastest and largest naval construction programs in history over the past 20 years. Today, they have a massive fleet of over 60 modern submarines. A significant portion of this fleet consists of Yuan and Song-class diesel-electric submarines, which are extremely quiet and equipped with modern air-independent propulsion systems. These submarines are excellent platforms for lying in wait and hunting enemy ships in shallow, noisy coastal waters, particularly in potential theaters of war such as the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea. Alongside this conventional power, there are also nuclear submarines, which form the backbone of China's nuclear deterrent. Type 093 Shang-class nuclear attack submarines, designed to hunt American aircraft carrier groups, and Type 094 Jin-class nuclear ballistic missile submarines carrying intercontinental missiles. This threat becomes even more frightening when combined with the giants in Russia's northern fleet inventory. Although its conventional forces suffered heavy blows in the Ukraine war, Russia's submarine fleet remains one of the most dangerous in the world. In particular, the new generation of Yasin M-class nuclear-powered guided missile submarines, or SSGNs, which Western experts claim are as quiet as an American Virginia class, pose an existential threat to NATO aircraft carrier groups with their hypersonic Zircon missiles. When this power is combined with the massive Boree-class ballistic missile submarines, SSBNs, which are the heart of Russia's nuclear deterrent and can each carry dozens of nuclear warheads, and the still numerous Akula-class attack submarines, it becomes clear that the U.S. faces a two-pronged submarine threat in both the Pacific and the Atlantic. Beijing and Moscow are not using these forces solely for defensive purposes. With their bold technological advances, they are challenging American dominance. Chinese scientists claim that with their newly developed AI-powered detection systems, even the quietest American submarines have only a 5% chance of survival. They are planning to turn the Taiwan Strait into a death trap with massive, autonomous, killer, unmanned submarines like the AJX-002. This arrogance and technological bravado is forcing the U.S. Navy to bring to the stage its silent, experienced, and still a generation-ahead power that has ruled the ocean depths for decades. But against this dual eastern alliance, the silent hunters are entering the stage. That is, we are talking about the secret of American submarine supremacy. The U.S. Navy's fleet of nuclear attack submarines is an asymmetric and overwhelming response to this numerical and arrogant challenge from China and Russia. The backbone of this power is the Virginia-class nuclear attack submarines. These submarines are not just weapons platforms. They are supercomputers, intelligence centers, and special forces bases floating in the depths of the ocean. What makes them so deadly is acoustic superiority. There is only one rule in modern submarine warfare. He who hears first wins. The Virginia class is living proof of this rule. Thanks to advanced reactor technology and sound-absorbing coatings, it can move underwater with a near-silent profile, matching the ocean's background noise. It is not a hunter, but a ghost. This acoustic superiority applies not only against China's relatively noisy submarines, but also against extremely quiet platforms like the Yasin M class, considered the pinnacle of Russian engineering. 
A Virginia-class submarine can detect a Chinese or Russian submarine hundreds of kilometers away, long before that submarine even realizes it has been detected. This is like going into a duel with a sword ten times longer than your opponent's. This silence is accompanied by modular striking power. Thanks to the Virginia Payload Module, VPM, each submarine can carry dozens of Tomahawk cruise missiles in addition to its standard torpedo load. These missiles can strike not only enemy ships, but also land targets more than 1,500 kilometers away, such as China's coastal air bases or Russia's naval ports on the Kola Peninsula. A Virginia-class submarine, on its own, has the firepower of a fleet. They can also carry special forces teams, such as Navy SEALs, and secretly infiltrate them just off enemy shores, underwater. These silent hunters are spread like a spider's web across strategic points in the Pacific and Atlantic. Opera Harbor in Guam is a forward operating base for them. Pearl Harbor in Hawaii is the main command center. Most importantly, allied ports such as Japan, Australia, Norway, and the United Kingdom give them the ability to operate anywhere in the world, right under the noses of both China and Russia. Of course, we must immediately turn our attention to this issue. Yes, the Virginias are massive deterrents for Russia and China, and the U.S.'s underwater power is deterrent enough on its own. But what truly makes this power invincible is the multi-layered brotherhood of hunters it forms by combining with a global network of allies. And this hunter brotherhood is not limited to the Pacific. On the other side of the Atlantic, Britain's astute-class nuclear submarines and Norway's P-8 fleets are conducting the same silent hunt against Russia's northern fleet. This is a global strangulation operation, covering not just one ocean, but the entire northern hemisphere of the planet. In the Pacific, Japan's extremely quiet Soryu and Taigei-class diesel-electric submarines are a nightmare in the East China Sea. Under the AUKUS Pact, Australia will soon acquire its own nuclear attack submarines, becoming the newest member of this hunter club. All of these submarines work in tandem with the sonar wall created by hundreds of P-8 and P-3 submarine hunter aircraft in the sky. This creates a multi-layered trap that is nearly impossible to overcome, both above and below the water. So, what happens if these giants ever face off? Imagine a simultaneous crisis erupting in Taiwan on one side, and in the Baltic or Arctic on the other. In this scenario, China could decide to blockade Taiwan. China's submarines and autonomous drones could begin mining the sea lanes leading to Taiwan. However, in this possible scenario, the response would be immediate and deep. American, Japanese, and Australian attack submarines, which had been lying in wait for months at different points in the ocean, could open the hunting season. Their first targets would be Chinese submarines and surface ships laying mines or enforcing the blockade. This would not be a naval battle, but an execution. At the same time, a crisis could erupt in the Arctic. Russia desperate after its defeat in Ukraine, could decide to challenge NATO. Bore-class nuclear submarines in the Barents Sea could be put on alert. However, before these Russian submarines even leave port, they would be detected by American Seawolf and Virginia-class submarines that have been waiting for them under the ice for months. P-8s from Norway and the United Kingdom could fill the area with sonar buoys. In this way, Russia's nuclear trump card is rendered ineffective before it can even be played, in its own home, in its own castle. This situation is the final and most insurmountable barrier that the U.S. and its allies have placed in front of both China's and Russia's imperial dreams. The future of the Pacific and the Arctic will be determined not by the number of ships on the surface, but by the will of those who rule the silence in the depths. This is not about winning a war. It is about making that war so unbearably costly and risky for Beijing and Moscow that they will never dare to start it. This is a verdict delivered in the depths, and that verdict has already been written. But history teaches us that no verdict lasts forever. This technological humiliation is pushing Beijing and Moscow into an even more desperate and dangerous quest to close this gap. While China develops its own Type 095 and 096 nuclear submarines, Russia dreams on paper of its own new generation of Leica-class submarines. But with a bleeding economy in Ukraine and an industry completely cut off from Western technology, these dreams resemble fantasies drawn up in the Kremlin's propaganda department rather than engineering projects. The real race is no longer just about building a quieter submarine. It's about writing a smarter artificial intelligence algorithm, developing more autonomous systems, and managing all these elements more effectively within a single integrated network. And in this new war, the US and its allies appear to be one step ahead, not only technologically, but also strategically and philosophically. They believe in the power of a system of systems, an alliance, not just a single platform.
and this belief is their greatest weapon. And the winner of this technological race will be the future master not only of the Pacific, but of the entire world. However, silicon chips and artificial intelligence algorithms cannot win a war on their own. Those ingenious designs, those complex codes, must ultimately be transformed into steel, titanium, nuclear reactors, and tens of thousands of kilometers of cables. So the silent hunt in the depths of the Pacific and the Arctic is not just a technology race, but also a ruthless, exhausting, and unforgiving industrial war. This is not a test of who can design smarter submarines, but who can build them faster, with higher quality, and in greater numbers. The ultimate test of industrial resilience and production capacity. And in this test, the US and China are laying bare the strengths and weaknesses of two different philosophies, two different worlds. A nuclear attack submarine is the most complex and technologically dense machine humanity has ever produced. It combines, on a single platform, a nuclear power plant, the life support systems of a space shuttle, the processing power of a supercomputer, and the lethal firepower of an arsenal. Building such a beast is not just about money and engineering. It requires decades of accumulated knowledge, a complex supply chain involving thousands of specialized suppliers, and most importantly, a highly specialized workforce and massive shipyards capable of assembling the pieces of this enormous puzzle. In this industrial war, the challenges and advantages faced by the US and China are as different as the submarines themselves. The United States undoubtedly possesses unrivaled technological superiority in designing and building the world's best, quietest, and deadliest submarines. The Virginia and Seawolf classes are steel proof of this superiority. However, behind this technological genius lies a tired and overstretched industrial base that has been sounding increasingly alarming bells in recent years. The problem is not that the U.S. cannot build these ships, but that it cannot build them fast enough. There are only two major shipyards in the U.S. capable of building nuclear submarines, General Dynamics Electric Boat and HII's Newport News Shipbuilding. These two giant facilities have scaled back their capacity since the end of the Cold War and are now under the crushing pressure of managing several massive projects simultaneously. On the one hand, they are trying to build the new Virginia-class submarines, which are the backbone of the Navy, while on the other hand, they must focus on the production of the much larger and more complex Columbia-class ballistic missile submarines, which represent the future of the U.S.'s nuclear deterrent. This situation has created a bottleneck in the shipyards, leading to years of delays in delivery schedules and cost overruns. Compounding this problem is the fragility of the supply chain and workforce. A nuclear submarine consists of millions of parts from over 4,000 different suppliers. The bankruptcy or production delay of a single small company in this chain, such as a specialized valve or pump manufacturer, can halt the construction of an entire submarine for months. Worse still, since the end of the Cold War, the number of highly skilled welders, engineers, and technicians with the specialized skills required to build these complex machines has dramatically declined. Training a new generation requires years of education and experience. This is where the true strategic genius of the AUK-US Pact comes into play. AUK-US is not just an agreement to provide Australia with nuclear submarines. It is a multinational solution designed to overcome this industrial bottleneck by combining the industrial power, knowledge base, and human resources of three countries, the US, the UK, and Australia. This pact incorporates the UK's highly experienced submarine shipyard at barrow in furness operated by BAE Systems, and the new, modern shipyard that Australia will build in Osborne in the future into the American industrial ecosystem. This distributes the production load, reduces risk, and prevents a failure at a single point from bringing down the entire system. The hundreds of billions of dollars invested in this project by the three countries will be used not only to build new submarines, but also to modernize existing shipyards, strengthen supply chains, and most importantly, train a new generation of engineers and technicians in all three countries. One of the most astute parts of the plan is that American and British nuclear submarines will begin using Australian ports in the heart of the Pacific, such as HMAS Stirling near Perth, for routine maintenance and repairs. This eliminates the need for those submarines to make a journey of tens of thousands of kilometers back to the U.S. for maintenance. This both increases operational tempo and relieves the burden on already overloaded shipyards in the U.S., allowing them to focus solely on new and most complex construction projects. In short, AUK-US is not just a military alliance, but also a revolutionary, multinational industrial cooperation model designed to produce the most complex technological product of the 21st century. In stark contrast to this complex and slow American model stands China's dizzying speed and massive scale. 
China's state-controlled shipyards currently have more shipbuilding capacity than the rest of the world combined. They are launching new destroyers, frigates, and amphibious ships in series, almost like sausages rolling off an assembly line. This is Beijing's greatest advantage, brute industrial force. They can build many more ships much faster than the U.S. and its allies. However, behind this dizzying speed and enormous scale lie serious and perhaps fatal weaknesses. China can build ship hulls at record speed. But what makes a submarine a submarine is not the steel on the outside, but the technology on the inside. And in this area, especially in the most critical areas such as the silencing of a nuclear reactor, the integration of advanced sonar systems, and the production of high-strength steel alloys, China still lags decades behind the West and even Russia. They are spending billions of dollars to close this technological gap and are conducting aggressive industrial espionage. However, a stolen technology blueprint cannot replace the decades of trial and error experience and deep institutional knowledge required to perfect that technology. China's submarine crews lack the deep experience and rigorous training culture possessed by the elite submariners of the U.S. Navy's silent service. Operating a nuclear submarine for months at a time, thousands of meters below the ocean's surface, in absolute secrecy, is not just a technical skill but also a psychological art. Even the quietest submarine can instantly become the noisiest object in the ocean due to the smallest mistake made by its crew, such as dropping a key. This human factor remains China's weakest link. A command and control economy run by the state can quickly mobilize resources to achieve specific goals. However, this system is often inefficient, resistant to innovation, and fragile. It lacks the flexible and innovative ecosystem represented by AUKUS, which combines the dynamism of the private sector with the strategic vision of the state. In this industrial war, Russia is now merely a footnote. The once powerful Soviet submarine shipyards, such as Sevmash, are now struggling due to sanctions, corruption, brain drain, and technological isolation. They are now struggling to maintain their existing fleets, let alone build new generation submarines to participate in this race. Therefore, this silent war in the depths of the Pacific and other oceans of the world is not only a war of technologies, but also a war of industrial philosophies. This is a clash between China's state-driven, brute force-based model seeking numerical superiority and the West's flexible, multinational, innovation-focused network model that puts the human factor at its core. The US and its allies may build fewer submarines. However, each platform they build will be a masterpiece, representing the pinnacle of technology, operated by the world's best-trained crews and supported by a global network of allies. China can produce massive quantities of hulls, but it has yet to prove whether it can put into those hulls the quality, the quietness, and most importantly, the spirit needed to truly rule the ocean depths. Russia faces even tougher challenges in this regard. In this long and arduous industrial battle waged in the secret forges where submarines are forged, the AUKUS alliance has staked its claim not on raw numbers, but on the enduring power of shared technology, trust, and human experience. And this is the bet that China, despite all its industrial might, will find most difficult to counter. Russia will also be concerned about demonstrating its ability to respond to the U.S. and its Pacific partners in the field of submarine power. In short, the submarine threat produced by the Russia-China partnership has collided with U.S. Pacific power. So what do you think? Could China's technological advances one day truly threaten U.S. dominance underwater? Or would the U.S. emerge victorious in this invisible war in the event of a potential Taiwan conflict? Please share your valuable opinions and analyses with us in the comments section. Thank you for watching.